a thousand dollars as a food delivery driver every week in this video i'm going to tell you how to do it and also this is probably going to be the most honest take you're going to hear because not everyone is going to be able to make this Take a look on basic math. You'd have to do 67 hours at $15 an hour. That's gross hourly earnings. 50 hours at $20, even if you're hitting our channel goal here, $25 an hour for every single hour, you'd still need to do a full week's worth of driving. So in that sense, yes, it just comes down to basic math. If you're doing this, obviously 5, 10, 15 hours a week, you are not gonna make $1,000. But if that's your goal, let's get into how to do it. Number one, you have to qualify for all orders, even if you don't like it. Why? Because it's more options. And if you didn't know, now DoorDash actually needs verification, for instance, if you have a pizza bag to get more of those orders. Don't ignore that. That's in your profile, by the way. But also, if you didn't know that you should turn on opt-in, whatever, make sure you're getting the emails from these companies. Again, the big three and local and regional options if you're going to use them. Why? Because let's turn our attention back to DoorDash. If you want, on average, a hundred plus dollar orders that comes from DoorDash's catering side, their drive orders. Now understand, not all marketplaces are seeking DoorDash drive orders, have DoorDash drive, but you can always reach out to support as well to, again, make sure you're qualifying, at least see if it's available in your market. Say, hey, do we have DoorDash Drive? If so, am I on the wait list? If not, get yourself on the wait list. Now, I fully understand, listen to this, that not all programs are worth it either. So don't spin your wheels going for a program that doesn't make sense in your marketplace. I'm looking at DoorDash Priority Access, aka it used to be called Accept More, Earn More. We have to hit 50% acceptance rate or 70% is the highest tier acceptance rate to get access to the highest paying orders in your market. Why? Because if honestly you have to hit like $25 an hour, if you're doing 40 hour weeks, then you might see a lot less paying orders, farther orders, just trying to hit those thresholds. Now I've been saying this next one for years, but I still see when I talk to drivers that, hey, I just do Uber Eats. I just do DoorDash you have to get activated on all apps. And as of late, I've been including strong local and regional options. Don't go for the tiny little platform. It's not gonna really make sense. Why would I get activated though on let's say Grubhub, the clear number three in the food delivery market share space at least that it's not that busy. I even see it here in Pittsburgh. Grubhub's not that busy. Well, get activated because I've seen good one-off orders that pay exceptionally on the dollars to mile ratio. Even if they're few and far between, it is going to be, listen to this, part luck, part skill, and part market trends and understanding where and when to drive. What is the biggest influence the biggest aspect that really helps you earn more money, like $20, $25 plus per hour. It is a bonus pay and the promotional pay. What app pays the most as far as bonus pay in your market? Do you even get bonus pay? If so, what days, what times? What's the average bonus pay if it's surge? Okay, what's the average surge if it's, I don't know, Grubhub? I never really see anything from Grubhub. Comment down below. Peak pay, what is the average peak pay? And then what is the highest surge or peak pay? Because then if I'm driving and it's like $3 today, I know, well, I typically would only see a max of $4 peak pay, so chances are it's gonna be pretty busy. If I am gonna drive, this is what we talk about, kind of the bell curve of peak pay specifically, that if it is the max peak pay, Am I gonna make statistically more money driving on the four crazy $5 peak pay versus maybe my second choice of my market segment, that's a $253 peak pay, because everyone's looking over here, shiny object, four $5 peak pay. 
I can slip in in my secondary choice and make more money. If you need to track peak pay, bonus pay, and you're driving in general, you need our earnings tracking spreadsheet. Number one, you need a mileage tracker of some sort. So it serves as a mileage tracker. You can enter the data after every shift here but you can also study trends of what is the data actually telling me? Get yours, yourdrivermike.com, click on resources. And I already know what you're saying. I already know and I understand like, hey, I haven't seen as much peak pay. And surge for me, surge here in Pittsburgh, I haven't seen as much of that. It clearly impacts my earnings. At that point, look at other apps and ultimately other niches because if something's drying up, hopefully if you don't drive for a while, they'll toss you some kind of bonus to get you back on the platform. But let's turn our attention to that third piece of the pie. I mean, there's base pay, there's the promotional pay, and then there's customer tips on these platforms. Understand this, updated for 2023. If you didn't realize this, or you're just getting signed up, or if you've been driving for a while, I guarantee this is gonna be affecting you, specifically on DoorDash, is the new order screen that we've seen is not showing the expected customer tip. At least here in Pittsburgh, at the time of filming this, Uber Eats is, and I believe Grubhub is as well, comment down below. But use that, that's different than what? Even a year ago, that's different where we used to see that expected customer tip, your screen's gonna vary and it actually might change during the day, the same shift or different days. So you might see both screens as well. How to make more tips, because if we can't even see tips in general, it's the basics. It's, I mean, you can only do so much to influence customer tips on these platforms. If there's a problem, if there's something missing at the restaurant, communicate a substitution. If you've been waiting for, I'd say 10 minutes is really my threshold. If I'm waiting longer than 10 minutes, I mean, obviously you have cancellation strategies at like the 15 minute point, I'd say 12 to 15 minutes, you can possibly use one of your reserved cancellations. But if you are gonna wait, shoot the text. Hey, just wanna let you know I'm still waiting at the restaurant. Traffic is another good one as well. Hey, just so you know, I encountered a road closure. They're diverting traffic. Just wanna give you a heads up. And then now for the more rare in-person drop-offs, basic customer service, okay? Make eye contact, be friendly, have one little like opener welcoming thing. Hey, how's your day? Got your delivery for you. They most likely don't wanna talk to you for longer than that, so just keep it frank and good presentation basics like that. If you're trying to hit $1,000 every single week, it really is that, it is some luck, as in, well, for whatever reason, more people are ordering, there's less drivers today, that's good, that benefits me, combined with more peak pay, surge, what have you, I'm benefited from algorithmic changes like that. Positioning strategies, I know where to be, different power strips. And again, going back to luck, because part of this is definitely luck, that the runs that I'm getting, usually there's a handful of those exceptional orders, like three, four dollar per mile runs that you just happen to get. That is the formula to make a thousand dollars a week. And that is really the only formula to make a thousand dollars a week. It is a combination of luck, of skill and positioning, understanding market trends, bonus pay offerings, and higher customer tips on some of those orders. Because otherwise, listen to this, if one of those things is off, bad luck, positioning, yeah, accept a bad order, you're going for a program that doesn't make sense, top dash or whatever it is, then you are simply going to have to drive more hours. Because yes, like we talked about at the beginning of this video, it just comes down to math. And especially with Uber and DoorDash, both citing decreases Increased costs per trip, which includes driver pay and driver incentives over the last two quarters, I'd say. They've cited this in their earnings calls from Q3 of 2022 into Q1. Now we're obviously rolling into Q2 of 2023. So if it seems harder since, let's say, 2021, when I've given you my first tips on how to make $1,000 a week, then that makes sense. So that's something we're going to have to watch. I still feel like These apps are best positioned as a side hustle. DoorDash says most all of their, well, I think it's 80 some percent, 80 plus percent of dashers, maybe 90% are dashing less than five hours a week. Let us know down below how much you're driving. But if it seems more challenging, then that might make sense. So let us know as well how you're adapting. Are you looking at other niches? Because we want you to multi-niche as well, as well as other business opportunities, maybe outside of the gig economy.